we are going to be in the Bible today, okay? Because there is power in the Word of God. Yes, sir. Y'all want power in your life? Get into the Word. Get into the Word of God. Hallelujah. There is power in there. Yes, there is. Power. We're just waiting for you to get to it. Hallelujah. Last week, we talked about um, uh, part one of this message that I'm going to finish out today. Um, the power of belief. The power of believing. Hallelujah. Okay, and last week we talked about um, in the in the New Testament, Jairus and how his daughter had died, and, and you know he had gone to the Master Jesus to to heal her, and then you know, and so Jesus just told him, you know, Jairus, just believe. Don't let fear seep into your spirit. Just believe. Hallelujah. And so today we're going to talk a little bit more about that. So if you would turn to actually no, let me just read from the book of Hebrews. You don't have to turn now. I'm just going to read this verse for you. It says, "But without faith, it is impossible to please Him, Him being the Lord. For he who comes to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him." Yes. Father God, we just thank you for this time today. We thank you for all those who came to the house today to partake of your word, Father, to partake of your spirit, just to uh, get wisdom, Father God, for their everyday living. We thank you for them. We pray that the word will come forth, come out forth, unhindered by any plans of the enemy, Father God. We thank you for it. We know that, Father God, when it comes forth, you're going to multiply it, Father God, and lives are going to be changed. We believe that, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. Okay? Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, you are on. Have your way. Um, I want to read to you a story that I read. Start off with a story. This is one evening, an elderly Cherokee brave told his grandson about a battle that goes on inside people. He said, my son, the battle is between two wolves inside us all. One is ego, it is anger, envy, jealousy, sorrow, regret, greed, arrogance, self-pity, guilt, resentment, inferiority, lies, false pride, and condemnation. The other is good. It is joy, peace, love, hope, humility, kindness, goodness, benevolence, empathy, gener generosity, truth, compassion, faith. The grandson thought about it for a minute, and then he asked his grandfather, which wolf wins? <coughs> the old Cherokee simply replied, the one you feed. The one you feed. So we're going to be talking about belief, hallelujah, today. Believing in the things of God, okay? When you believe in the things of God, what you're doing is you're feeding the good wolf, okay? You're feeding the new man because when we receive the uh, uh, the Lord as our Savior, the Bible says that the old man dies, and there's a new it's, it's a new beginning. It, it, it's it's a rebirth of your spirit. Hallelujah. Okay. And so when you're reborn in the spirit, right? It's time to start feeding that spirit. It's time to feed the good things. Hallelujah. And so that's why you come to the to the house of God. To feed, to feed your new spirit good things, okay? So um, so I so with with that, with the with belief, I want to just talk about five things, and the Holy Spirit always gives me the five. <laughs> um, five things that um, that if we believe, okay, what what it does for us, okay, and what belief does for us, okay. So the first one we're gonna go into the book of Matthew 17. Okay, Matthew 17, starting in the 14th verse. Today we're going to be in the Bible, okay? We'll wait on you for you to find it. Um, if, you know, we'll wait on you for you to find it. You know, every Bible has a, a wonderful table of contents in the beginning. So if you don't know where it's at, just look at your table of contents. We're in Matthew 17, in the, in the New Testament, okay? Matthew 17, 14th verse. It says, and when they had come to the multitude, a man came to him, him being Jesus, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic and suffers severely, for he is he often falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with 
you. How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out? So Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Hallelujah. What a powerful word. So what is happening here? Jesus told his disciples, you could not cast out that demonic spirit because of your unbelief, okay? And here's the, here's the one point I want to, the first point I want to make. Unbelief looks to self, whereas belief looks to the Savior. Unbelief looks to self, whereas belief looks to the Savior. I really do believe that what was going on here with these disciples, and reading this, you know, you have to use your imagination. you got to let the Spirit talk to you when you're reading the word of God. I really believe what was going on was that these disciples were looking at themselves and thinking that they had, within themselves had the power to, to heal this boy, to cast out that demonic spirit, okay? And, and, and so many times people have got, if we think that, that our power and, and our ability, even our ability to live everyday lives comes from our own strength, then we're sorely mistaken because the Bible clearly teaches us that we need the strength of Jesus Christ. We need the strength of the Savior. We need to keep our eyes on him. We need to know that everything he does, the Bible says you can't do anything without me. Jesus said that you can't do anything without him. Do you know? So you know, just know this, that if the Lord has called you to do something powerful for him, I don't know what it is. You know, he called you to be a teacher, or he called you to be a minister, or he called you to be a doctor. Know that you cannot do it in your own uh, strength. You need the strength of the Savior. And surely, when you when we come up here, we pray for people. We are a praying church, and we pray for them, and we pray for healing, and we pray for other things, from deliverance, from all these things for people. We have to know that when we pray for people, whether we're laying hands on them, or whether we have somebody stand in from them, that we are not the ones doing the healing. Amen. That it is God Almighty who heals. You know, that should take off so much pressure. We put so much pressure on ourselves as Christians that we have to do this and we have to do that. When God says, no, it's me doing it. Just know that I am the one doing it. So when you lay hands on somebody or you pray for somebody, know that it is God that is doing the healing. And when you believe that, hallelujah, miracles will happen. Praise God. Amen. It's time for us to start believing on Him. Don't believe in yourself. Hallelujah, he will give you the strength, but it's him doing the work. It's him mm -hmm. doing the work. Hallelujah. Yeah. Okay? Number two, um, we're going to go ahead and turn. So the first one, unbelief looks to the self, whereas belief looks to the Savior. Hallelujah. Number two, we're going to go to the uh, to the book of 2 Kings in your Old Testament. Again, look in your table of contents if you need to. Mine is on page 536, but yours is probably different. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Second Kings, the fourth chapter. Are you there? Probably not, but I'll wait for you. Hallelujah. What a good God we have. What a good Savior we have. What a glorious Lord we have. Hallelujah. Today we're gonna we're gonna leave here. We're gonna, you know, the Bible the Bible or we're called believers, right? We better start living up to that name. You better start living up to that name. If we're believers, we better start believing on something good. Hallelujah. Okay, so we're in 2 Kings, the fourth chapter, starting in the first verse. Okay, and again, I told you I'm going to jump around this word today, but that's okay because you're going to be fed today. When you come into Transformation Christian Church, you are going to be fed the word of God. Hallelujah. The word changes you. Hallelujah. Okay, so four, uh, the fourth verse, chapter, uh, starting in verse 1. It says, a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elijah, saying, your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord, and the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. Now, y'all might have some problems, but I don't know if y'all have been here. Mm -hmm. So Elijah said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. 
Don't be complaining about which one had. All this woman had was a jar of oil. Okay? <laughs> then he said, go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. In other words, gather a lot. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons, then pour it into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured it out. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil and pay your debt, and you and your sons live on the rest. Wow, what a miracle. People, God, this is a true story. This is not a made-up fictional story. It was God, hallelujah. God did, a, did miracles back in the Old Testament. God today is still doing miracles. Do you believe? Do you believe? I believe, I believe I can do miracles, and he still does. Hallelujah. So that's my second point about the unbelief, is that unbelief looks at the situation. Belief looks at, belief looks at the solution. Hallelujah. Okay, now this woman, what, what did Elijah do? Elijah, you know, she, she came to him, she said, you know, the creditors are going to take my sons. I have nothing. You know, that is a bad, how many of y'all know that's a bad situation? When your sons are going to be sold as uh, uh, slaves, you're a widow, who's going to take care of you? That's a bad situation. So what did Elijah do? He told her, what do you have? And sometimes we think we don't have what it takes to accomplish a miracle. You know, this woman, where, where was her solution? In her house. Where is your solution? In your house, the temple of God. Your solution is in your house, people of God. When you have a situation, know that Almighty God, because you belong to Him, His Spirit dwells inside of you. And if you just take a moment to get alone with Him and seek Him out about your situation, He has the answer for you. It is in your house. Amen. And He's ready to talk to you about it. Hallelujah. Get your eyes off the situation and put your eyes on the solution. It's there. To every problem, God has a million solutions, but all you need is one. Amen. All you need is one. And he has it. Hallelujah. Amen. So unbelief looks at to the self, belief looks to the Savior. Unbelief looks to at the situation, belief looks at the solution. Hallelujah. The number three, we're going to find that in 2 Kings 6, just a couple pages over. 2 Kings 6. 2 Kings 6, starting in the 8th verse. We are all over this word today. I'm loving it. You're there? Just flip a couple pages. Okay, let's look starting in verse 8 of, of, of chapter 6. Now the king of Syria was making war against Israel, and he consulted with his servants, saying, My camp will be in such and such a place. Okay, and the man of God, the man of God being Elijah, sent to the king of Israel, saying, Beware that you do not pass this place, for the Syrians are coming down there. So what's going on? The Syrians are the enemies of, of Israel. Okay? Elijah is telling the king basically everywhere where the Syrians are, are at, so that they don't go to those places, okay? And who's telling Elijah this? Where does he know that information? From God Almighty? Elijah was a man of God. You know, the Spirit of God was all over him. Then the king of Israel sent someone to the place of which the man of God had told him. Thus he warned him, and he was watchful there, not just once or twice. So many times this happened, okay? Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was greatly troubled by this thing, and he called his servants and said to them, Will you not show me? Which of us is for the king of Israel? So in other words, the king of Syria thought he had a spy among his, his troops. And that he the spy was telling the king of Israel everywhere they were going. Okay? 
And, the, and, and one of the servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elijah, the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom. So he said, Go and see where he is, and that I may send and get him. And it was told him, saying, Surely he is in Dothan. So he's now, now the king is saying, He's mad. You know, uh, Elijah's telling all his business, and so he's not able to, to, to capture the Israeli people and, and, and overtake them like he wants to do. And so he goes after Elijah. Okay? Therefore, he sent horses and chariots and a great army, a great army. I mean, a lot of, a lot of soldiers there, and they came by night and surrounded the city. And when the sea sends a whole troop of people after one man, really? I mean, an army! <laughs> and he's going to eat them. Okay? And when the servant of the man of God rose early and, and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots, and his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? So he answered, Elijah answered, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. So he tells his servant, says, what are we going to do? This army of, I don't know how many, maybe thousands of soldiers are surrounding us. What are we going to do? And Elijah says, don't worry about it. There's more on our side than on this side. You know, that servant kind of was like, one, two. <laughs> okay. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elijah. So Elijah saw in the spirit, okay, God's army. And that's my third point. Unbelief lives by the senses, whereas belief lives by the supernatural. Hallelujah. Elijah wasn't looking around at his natural situation, all this army of hundreds or thousands of soldiers. He was looking into the supernatural and he saw an army of God's heavenly hosts surrounding him, ready to protect him, ready to fight for him. Hallelujah. And, and you know, it's interesting that he says to he says to God, open the young man's eyes. Well, don't you think the guy, the, the, the young man was already seeing? What was he saying? Open his supernatural eyes. People, God, sometimes we just got to know. We got to open up our supernatural <laughs> eyes and know that what God has promised in his word, that, we, that he is able, that when something comes, when the enemy comes around us, when we can't pay that light bill, when, when, when our husband walks away, hallelujah, when our boss is acting, oh, praise God, when the, the, when the, 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 the courts are against you, hallelujah, we got to look into that supernatural and say, uh-uh, God, if God be for me, then who, hallelujah, can be against me? Praise God. Hallelujah. It's time. Y'all got to stop looking at the natural. You know that the supernatural is more real than the natural is in God's kingdom. God's ways are higher than our ways. What a good God to serve. Let's stop living by what we can see and what we can hear and what we can touch and what we can uh, smell. Let's stop living by our senses and know that there is a realm beyond the senses. Hallelujah. Where there, where, you know, when we work, when we're waiting on God to do something, he, we're waiting for that car and we're waiting for that job. Don't you know it's out there in the supernatural? Y'all just got to know how to pull that thing into the natural. Hallelujah. So unbelief looks to the self, belief looks to the Savior. Unbelief looks at the situation, belief looks at the solution. Unbelief lives by the senses, belief lives by the supernatural. Number four, unbelief listens to Satan and his lies. Belief listens to the saving knowledge of the word and promises of God Almighty. Hallelujah. We need people, God. We need to stop listening to the uh, to the lies of the enemy. You know, the word says that our enemy is he's saying he's a liar, he's a father of lies. And don't you know he will whisper things in your ear? Hallelujah. He, you know, the, the first sin of the Bible was Satan coming to Eve and lying to her. Lying 
to her. And what does she do? Instead of rejecting that and Adam rejecting that and saying, no, 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 I know what my God promised us. They believed him. And so went the fallen man. How sad. Because of believing the lies from God. You know, it's like God's word has power. It has yeah, ultimate yeah. power. Y'all need to, we need to stop making the word of God the final authority in our lives instead of making the lies of the enemy our final authority. Equally mm-hmm. said, uh, saying, and, and, and look at the, 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 the havoc it has wreaked. It's time to start believing that God has wonderful promises for you people. God, he promised you good health. He yes, promised yes. you. He said you can have money if you want to have it. Yes, yes. He says you can have good relationships, praise <laughs> God. He says you can have a, a joy and peace, hallelujah. Yes, Even yes. Your, your dreams can come true. He gives you visions. He gives you dreams. He says, yeah, the reason he gives it to, to you so that you can stand up and stop feeding that that uh, the ego wolf, start feeding the good wolf, wolf and see your dreams come true. Praise God. Satan will, he'll shoot those fiery thoughts at you. Oh, you're not going to do it. It's too hard. Did God really say that? Did God really say that you can have good health? Did God really just say that you can have a house and a car and food and all the things you need? Did God really say that you can, um, you know, Go to college and make something of your life. Did you really say that? Yes. Let's stop listening to that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All this, you made the beliefs. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay. The uh, the fifth and final thing. So unbelief listens to Satan and his life. Believe listens to the saving knowledge of the word and promises of God. How do we get there? How do I get there, Pastor? I want to believe the Lord, but it's just so hard. You know, I'm, my situation is this and my situation is that. You know, people have got this one solution, and that is getting into the Word of God. Start believing the promises. He has hundreds and hundreds of promises in His Word. Just start getting in there and believing, hallelujah, that what He said, He is well able to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Number five, I'm almost done. Unbelief. Believe, y'all, some of y'all are saying, oh, I'm not a pastor. I don't want to talk about sin. But you know what? Unbelief leads to sin. Yeah. And belief leads to salvation. Remember Judas? Judas, who betrayed Jesus? He's a good example of that. Judas believed the lies of the enemy and it led to sin. His unbelief led to sin. You know, you know what? Jesus, he's not real. Mm-hmm. He's a phony. He's not really the savior. You need some money? Go betray him. And Jesus, and Jesus believed that. He, his belief led him to sin against the savior. Betrayed him. Betrayed him. The Bible says, say, enter Judas. Mm-hmm. Why? 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 Because he gave him a place. He gave him a place. He opened that door. He opened that portal, so to speak, and supernatural. He opened it up to say he would come in because of his unbelief. And he was a thief. You know, so many people out there, you know why people steal and, and whatever else because of their unbelief? They don't believe that God can get them the things that they want and need. So they think they have to go steal it from somebody. That's the only way they're going to get ahead. I have to sell drugs because, you know, I ain't got no job. I don't have a skill. Believe on God. Believe on God. He's a miracle worker. Yeah. He can take anybody and make them a somebody. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, if they just get a revelation of the love that he has for them, hallelujah, and that they're already a somebody because they he created them and he made them in his image. How wonderful, God, that he will make us in his image. Get a revelation of that. God Almighty, the creator of the heavens and the earth and everything that exists, hallelujah, he made us in his image. We're just like him. We're ready. We're, we're, we're just like our Savior. And the Bible says, as he is, so are we in this world. Not when we get to heaven. We're going to have we're going to be glorified. You know, the Bible 
Bible says when we get up there. But the Bible, it clearly said, as he is, so are we in this world. We're just like him, hallelujah. When we feed the good work. <laughs> when we feed the good work, hallelujah. Okay, so Judas, you know, he let all kind of sin seep in and it led to his death. Unbelief led to his death. And then, you know, Peter also betrayed Christ, right? Because he denied knowing him. The difference between Judas and Peter, I'll tell you the difference, is that Peter waited. Peter waited on the Lord. And, you know, the Bible says that Judas repented, but he didn't really believe. And he went and cut himself. He didn't really believe on Christ. He thought he was just like another man. No. He was the Savior. Hallelujah. He still is. Hallelujah. Amen. And we know, you know, belief leads to salvation. Now we know that if the Bible is, is replete with verses about if you believe on God, you'll be saved, you will get to heaven and eternally. We read John 3.16 last week. If you believe, you're gonna you're not gonna perish, you're gonna make it to heaven, hallelujah. And that's all wonderful. We need to, we need to make it to heaven, praise God. Eternity is a long time. Eternity is a long time. Hallelujah. But you know what? Salvation doesn't just mean that salvation, the word salvation means wholeness. In every area of your life, hallelujah. So, you know what? It's, it's like a package deal. You know, how many of you have ever gone out and bought a new car? Gone out and bought a new car. I know I have, hallelujah. God bless me. I bought a new cars. You know what? When you go, it, it, you know, it used to be you used to get a car and back in the day, and there wasn't a lot of frills to it. You know, you just, it was just a car to get you from point A to point B. Nowadays, you go get a car, right? And you want the stereo system, you know, and you want the the Bluetooth so you can do a hands-free phone and you want the heated seats and you want all the, all the, all the cool looking lights. You know, it's a, it's a package thing. You want all the frills to your car. It's not just about getting from point A to point B. It's about getting from pet point A to point B in comfort. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay? And so that's how it is with salvation. It's not just about getting to heaven. We're all going to get there. And that's a wonderful thing. Hallelujah. Praise God. But you know what? It's about getting through this life with all the thrills. Hallelujah. It's a package deal. He didn't just give you salvation, people of God, so you can be, um, uh, be glorified in heaven. He gave you salvation so you can have the good things that he wants you to have in this life. Have a sound mind. So many people walking around with their minds all crazy. That are not to be for a, for a child of God. Hallelujah. Depression. Some of even Christians are medication for depression. That are not to be. That is not God's will. The package deal says that he went to the cross. He finished the work so that you can have a sound mind. So that you can have peace. So that you can have joy. So that you can have love. So that you can have the material possessions you need to, go, uh, to live in comfort. That is my God.
but you all have to Amen. We have to believe it. I started, I'm going to finish this up with Hebrews 11 6. But without faith, it's impossible mm-hmm. to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is, that He is what He is. And that He is, so you got to believe one, two things here the same. You got to believe that He is mm-hmm. Savior and Lord. Hallelujah, over your life. And you have to believe that he will reward you for diligently seeking him. Hallelujah. When you seek him and you believe, you know, you come to church, Lord Jesus, I believe I'm seeking you at the church house. So I know when I leave here, you want to bless me, Father God. I'm seeking you in your word before I go to bed at night. I'm spending 10 minutes, 15 minutes in your word reading it. So I know that you, I'm seeking you, Lord, so I know you got a blessing. I'm seeking you when I'm ministering to, to, to Sister Betty, who's all messed up her life. You know, she, she come to church, but she just, just gossiping and doing all kind of things. And so I'm ministering to her Lord so I know you gotta bless me hallelujah you know when my boss is yelling and getting and acting crazy I just go in my office and pray for him oh Lord Father God I'm seeking you out as I'm praying for my boss I know you gotta reward me holy God hallelujah praise God when that person cuts me off and instead of giving him a sign hallelujah uh, I just pray for them hallelujah oh I'm seeking you Lord you gotta reward me because I'm seeking you in that in everything that you do you're seeking God almighty hallelujah and he he will reward you. My God does not lie. Hallelujah. And he will reward you. He will give you good things. Do you believe? Hallelujah. Let's see.